our basic idea is that every kid growing up in the world today needs to be literate in thinking about STEM and technology. But the problem is we don't start telling them about it until late in their childhood careers. And the problem is that by then, many of them have decided that technology is too scary or too hard. So our idea is to start while they're very young, the same way we teach with language literacy. In fact, we think that coding is in fact a literacy. It's probably the literacy of the 21st century. In the beginning of the 20th century, everyone didn't read and write. Now everyone does. You can't get a job at McDonald's without reading and writing. Our idea is that very probably by the middle of this century, you won't be able to get a job at McDonald's if you can't write a simple program. Simple code. But the problem is that coding is abstract. And if you're a young child, you can't think abstractly yet. So our innovation is to turn all the abstract ideas into something tangible. Something every kid in the world, in every third world country, already knows how to do. And that is play with blocks. So we turn each command into a block with a picture on it. Oh, that's smart. So there's no, there's no PCs, there's no screens, there's no smartphones. We don't want to make this impossible for kids to have access to it. You don't even need to have a steady source of electrical power, just AA batteries. Well, first you decide what you want your robot to do. And you have a choice. You can choose any of these. You can choose these light commands, these sound commands, motion commands, and actually some very sophisticated commands that we call conditional statements. Okay. Wait for clap, repeat until, and if then. These are, these are computer science things that we have seven-year-olds do a beautiful job working with. So we'll start by making a very simple program. Why don't we say we want our robot to go forward and then turn a blue light on, and then, I don't know, spin, and then sing. Okay, here's a very simple story we want our robot to tell. Okay. Now, maybe it's telling the story because we're reading a book. And this robot, you can see, is very simple. It's really a canvas. You can decorate this robot with art supplies to look like the Very Hungry Caterpillar, or Winnie the Pooh, or any, any character, to look like a baseball player or a dancer. Anyway, this is the story we're going to tell now. Okay. Now, if we want this robot to move, we have to build a robot. If you're a four-year-old, you're used to having things handed to you, already done. We want our four-year-olds to start exercising their creativity. So what are these things do you need to make it move? I'm going to give you the answer because you probably don't have that much time. You need wheels. Okay. And what makes wheels go? Motors. Let me show them. You can see inside what a motor looks like which is really important. You can see inside what electrical circuitry looks like. It's really important. If you're a four-year-old, it looks like magic, and we're giving them all the wrong messages that things come down from you know, Mount Sinai with magic in them. But in fact, these are things that other humans made, and they can join the makers. So now, now this robot can move, but we need them to be able to turn the light on. What do we need to turn the light on? There it is. And it turns out the singing is built in. So this is all he need, needs right now. Okay. So now we have an idea. We've built a robot that can do that idea. How do we get the idea? You know the idea. I know the idea. But our robot doesn't know the idea. So they start learning that. How do machines learn things? The way we teach our machines is using a technology they've seen before. Every kid that's been with their parents to the grocery store knows what this is. <laughs> so now we scan one at a time. That's how the machine knows. Let's see if it's an obedient robot. Okay, let's see if it begins. There's only one button. Four, blue light on. And it's spin. And that's the end. Oh, very nice. He's singing. Oh, it's singing. Uh, maybe he stopped. Yeah, so that's, a, that's a really simple command, and we can make it can grow with the kids. So, how do robots learn to experience their environment? Well, if we give the robot an ear, it can hear things, and an ear is a piece of electronics. And so we can give it a command. We call it wait for clap. So now the robot is going to wait until you tell it to go on with the program. But now it's a new idea, so we've got to scan it again. 
And while I'm scanning, I have to ask you, are you a journalist? Are you a blogger? A teacher? Um, a I parent? Say all through, all through. No, no. <laughs> I'm a writer. I have a site called Mom in the City, and I also awesome. write other sites. So, so watch this. All I do is change the program with one block. It goes forward. He likes the blue light. He's not going to do anything. No, until he's doing you nothing. Clap. He's doing nothing until. And then it sings. And you can hear the sound. And if you want more sophisticated sounds, you can record up to three sounds using this convenient 1950s microphone. And so now the robot can help tell a story. So if you're, if you're reading Winnie the Pooh with your child, one way to get them interested in technology is to say, let's dress Kibo like Winnie the Pooh. And let's record some things Winnie the Pooh says. Like, hello Piglet, it's a very blustery day today. And you'll hold this down and then you'll, I, if I held that one down, I will play the piglet with that block and I'll make a big map on the floor with paper and I'll make a picture of the 100 acre wood and we're telling a story using a robot. Oh, I love it! I wish my kids were so little! <laughs> now this is a great introduction to all of those things that they now know like coding and... Your kids already know coding? Yeah. You must have started in like high school. Yeah, no, but they're so young. They started in elementary. So, 